Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatorius. So a question I actually get asked remarkably often, actually, um, more than I would have expected, is can battle axes be used for chopping wood? And I think one of the reasons that people often consider this question is because maybe they do role-playing games or video games. And, you know, in, in many games, even games that I play, actually, weapons are used for inappropriate tasks. So sometimes you'll find that, you know, I play uh, Mountain Blade Napoleonic Wars, for example. You can use, if there's like gabions or uh, kind of defences built, stakes, wooden stakes like this, you use your actual bayonet to hit them to break down the defences. And this is ridiculous. Obviously, most people know that. You can't destroy any kind of defences with a bayonet. <laughs> Not effectively, anyway. You're far better actually using a real tool like a pickaxe or a, um, an axe even or a hammer or um, you know shovels and things like this but I guess a lot of people don't have first-hand experience of these weapons they may have never even held one and so they don't know what they're like in reality so to the answer to answer the basic question can a battle axe be used for chopping wood it entirely depends on the type of battle axe okay so some battle axes are more like wood chopping axes in the in the ways that matter and we'll talk about the specifics of that in a minute and other battle axes really are purely fighting axes and really don't um, aren't appropriate at all for chopping wood and would probably uh, you know fall apart and not necessarily break but they would be so damaged by chopping wood that you just wouldn't want to use them for that so let's look at a few examples here so I happen to have a, a log of wood right here let's try and make sure that's in the shot um, because uh, we've got storms at the moment and we had a tree come down so I've got quite a lot of spare wood lying around at the moment including a fence that got taken down as well um, so if we take um, an example of an axe that definitely shouldn't be used for chopping wood okay so that is you will recognize this from the wall or rather the the, the doors <laughs> the um, garage doors in my a lot of my videos this is a um, an Indian axe and known as a bullova axe and these are these are quite characteristic and specific types of axe the, the shapes of the blades vary you get different types some are actually pointed you get different types of crescents yes they do look a bit like a big moustache some of them like this one um, but they are quite relatively dainty uh, certainly if we're talking about wood chopping axes now could you at a, if you really needed to if you really needed to chop a tree down could you use this well yes you could however would it survive that's debatable the reason um, that I doubt that is because a lot of the fixtures and fittings are not designed to do something heavy duty like smacking repeatedly into a tree trunk or a lump of wood uh, so that's the first thing they won't necessarily destroy the weapon but you're, you might lose parts of them secondly the blade is quite thin it's relatively thin so what they've done with a fighting axe and this is one of the themes you'll notice in this video and this topic if you look at it in a, on a larger scale is that fighting axes to maximize the cutting length of the blade often make the blade thinner so that they're a manageable weight so if i take at the um other end of the spectrum something like this uh, we could call this a tomahawk I suppose or a hatchet and um, this hatchet this is a relatively small edge but therefore it can still be quite thick and actually the weight of these two weapons is remarkably similar so what they've done is they've essentially taken this amount of steel and squished it out into a larger cutting edge the result therefore is you have a larger cutting edge it might debatably make a better fighting weapon within some circumstances so long as you're not hitting armored targets or something like that um, but it does mean that this is less well suited to chopping wood whereas the uh, hatchet here is completely well suited um, so if I just put down the bull over the Indian axe for a second I would have and in fact I have used this as a tool it's in, even got a little bit of mud on it right at the moment this one is made by Condor incidentally the bull over axe is an antique the, uh, this is a condor, um, I think they call it a tomahawk or viking, viking hawk maybe. Um, it's got some runes down it, which makes it viking apparently. It's not really exactly a viking design, but it's not a million miles different either. And this type of axe, something like Ragnar Lothbrok might use, um, absolutely, it's relatively small, relatively thick, robust. The, the shaft is fairly thick, that's the other thing to mention as well. Some fighting axes have shafts which are thinner than you'd really want from a wood chopping axe. Um, and absolutely, you know, no problem at all to go straight into a log or a tree with that. And it will function just the same 
as a typical hand axe that you might buy from the hardware store. And to be honest, they're not really different. These the shafts are a bit longer for fighting purposes. So usually a, a kind of hardware store hatchet will probably only have a handle about that long. But if you want a budget um, little fighting axe, maybe look around in some hardware stores for an axe which has got more of a shape that you prefer and stick it on a longer handle and boom, you've got some kind of tomahawk. So absolutely, this kind of axe could be used as a tool. Then we've got things that come in between. So probably next up from uh, the, let's call it a tomahawk, is this axe which um, I've re recently featured on the channel from uh, Tord at Thor's Forge. Now this is a fighting axe, it is a dedicated fighting axe of 14th century design modelled on one in the um, new, um, museum in Stockholm, uh, archaeologically found 14th century one. You find lots of examples of this kind of axe from the 13th century right the way through to the 15th, 16th century and in fact we could argue till the 19th and 20th century via the tomahawk uh, in North America and also when some tomahawks do have a spike on the back like this and also the um, boarding axe, as some people have correctly noted both French and British boarding axes sometimes look remarkably like this. I'm not going to use this for chopping the wood uh, because this is Tord's, it's not mine, uh, to do with uh, as I wish, although I have no doubts that it would chop into that wood exactly the same pretty much as this. They're actually quite similar axe blades, okay? The only real difference is this, this has a spike on the back. Now ironically you might say well why are these axes made thicker and more robust um, and why is this axe made thinner? Well Context, okay, so these are for hitting people who very often are going to be wearing armour, um, be it male, chain mail, or a mixture of male and plate, or sometimes full plate harness. Um, and you know, this spike on the back isn't there primarily for unarmoured targets, that will do the job perfectly well. You only need, that's why in the Viking era we only really get these. Unarmoured and lightly armoured targets, the axe is all you need, okay? If you want to hit someone with the back end, you can still hit them with that and it's like hitting them with a mace. Um, but the spike is there really to get through mail, gambeson and at a pinch, probably even plate armour as well on thinner plates. Um, maybe things like the fold, the leg plates, arm plates, maybe pauldrons, um, maybe the junction between the helmet and uh, the cuirass. Um, so absolutely, this uh, is f has an armoured fighting context. Okay, So in a way, what's the advantage of this? Well, in this, as we've mentioned, has the longer cutting edge. So this is going to be advantageous if you're fighting primarily unarmoured, um, opponents and these Bulova axes were used by tribal people in the centre of India and uh, in majority of whom were just wearing clothes. They weren't to encounter armour. When you look at Indian axes, uh, Indo-Persian axes for fighting against um, armoured opponents, they look like this. Okay, They tend to have thicker blades and spikes and hammers and top spikes and things like this. Um, so different type of axe for different type of job. Um, Next up in the kind of uh, specialised fighting axes, so this is somewhere in between. It's not, the blade isn't as big as the Bulova axe, but it is pretty long, but it is still quite thick. So this actually falls into the kind of the middle territory. This incidentally is from Wolfland, um, and I bought some years ago. I've never really used it for much, apart from hanging on my wall, to be honest. Um, but I believe that this is based on an archaeologically found example from Poland that was probably on a Danax length shaft or a longer shaft. I actually shortened the shaft because I wanted a one-handed axe, and then I realised that this head is a little bit too long for that. So this is kind of neither a one-handed nor a two-handed axe. It's, but anyway, um, this I would quite happily, and I'll demonstrate, quite happily chop wood with this. Okay, but it doesn't have the same feel as these sort of axes because of the edge geometry. So the edge geometry on this is narrower, is, is a smaller angle, thinner, with the result that it tends to bite into the wood and not necessarily kind of chop through the wood. Um, so you get a different result. Um, this is more, this is a specialised design really for fighting, but it is still thick enough that you could chop wood with it. So if you're thinking of video games or role-playing games or whatever, then this kind of falls in the middle territory. If you've got an axe that is similar to this, that is still quite a thick blade, but is still, you know, has got an elongated cutting edge. Yes, indeed, you could possibly use that for cutting wood, but it's not going to be as effective as some, as some other types of axe would be for cutting wood. Because of the edge geometry, 
and possibly if the blade is thin enough it might take damage so if you want to simulate that or just think about it even if you're just maybe right if you're an author writing a book you might want to think about that if you're forced to use a weapon as a tool then there might be consequences to that it might do the job you might be able to chop the wood you might be able to chop the tree down but you might damage the weapon you might blunt the edge because you've got a less robust edge on there uh, it would be slower to do that job perhaps less effective to do the job probably than the specialized tool for that job and additionally it might take damage it might not thereafter be so effective as a weapon without some form of repair and you might break the shaft and all this kind of stuff so this is a middle ground axe right final example i'm going to give it's our big old favorite and this one is also from uh Tord at uh, thor's forge and this is the danax this is the one with the pattern welded blade um, now these are i would say at almost as extreme end of the spectrum as the Bullover Axe is, in that they have, whilst they have reinforced edges for hitting armoured targets or just for general durability, we don't really know exactly why, but the reinforced edges here, not all of these Great Axes or Dane Axes do have reinforced edges actually, and I should reiterate that. Some of them just taper straight to an edge. I think roughly 50% or maybe even less than that have the reinforced edges, but anyway. These blades are very thin and very big, and to be so big, they have to be so thin to remain light, to be usable as weapons. So quite simply, yes, you could chop down a tree probably with this, but you might damage the blade, you will probably dull the edge um, to some degree, and also it's not gonna be very effective at cutting down the tree because it doesn't have the right edge geometry for that. Um, it, the edge geometry is quite narrow, quite thin, so it will cut into the tree and then you'll find yourself having to sort of dislodge it from the wood each time. Whereas a thicker blade goes in, cracks off a load of, um, load of wood, bar, uh, wood um, material, fiber, and comes out free, gets itself free quite easily. These thin blades will tend to get stuck and as mentioned, they might run the risk of getting damaged. Right, I hope that's been somewhat interesting and useful. Give us a like and a subscribe if you haven't done already. Um, and the basic answer, just to summarize, the basic answer is yes, you can chop trees down or chop wood with weapons, but generally speaking, the more specialized the weapon is into being a weapon, the less good it's gonna be usually at doing that job that it's not intended for, and it might get damaged or broken in the process. Thanks for watching. Give us a like and a subscribe. I've got extra videos on Patreon, um, links below, and see you soon for another video on Scholar Gladiatoria channel. Cheers, folks. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers, folks.